Hey everybody, welcome to Hockey Skate Down. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you want to join our hockey team, it's free. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell to all. Thank you all so much, and let's get started. So in this video, I want to talk about the game that happened last night. Uh, the Devils are officially eliminated from the playoffs after losing 3-2 in overtime to the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, you know, I'm doing this video a day later because I was having issues with my video from the night of. And, um, you know, come to find out tonight, the Carolina Hurricanes will be playing the Florida Panthers in the Eastern Conference Finals as the Florida Panthers won in overtime against the Toronto Maple Leafs and are advancing to there. So, should be a fun series in the Eastern Conference Finals between these two teams. Um, both are proven to play really good hockey leading into this round. So, um, I want to talk about the video, uh, talk about the Devils, uh, how they played throughout the year. Um, you know, it, it was a disappointing loss, you know, with the way the team was so resilient and was able to come back game in, game out this year, you know, you kind of had a feeling there was a, a last ditch effort for them to, to pull this off in this series, maybe win in overtime tonight, maybe push it to a game seven. Um, but it didn't happen. And, um, you know, it's a tough loss, but when you're looking back on this whole season, all fans can agree with me. They didn't think the devils would get this far. You know, from all these personal accolades, the team accolades, you know, breaking all these records. It's been a fun ride this year. You know, I started my channel in 2019 and, you know, year in, year out, it was always dis doing videos on disappointing losses and high draft picks. And, you know, this year's different. It, it was a fun year talking about all these players having such great years. You know, the coaching situations to what the team has been able to do with all these wins this year. It's It's been a fun ride. So you can't be too down on this. I, I know it sucks to lose when you're a fan of a team. Um, I've been a Devils fan since 92, 93, so I've seen the ups and downs of this team, but, you know, we're just projecting to go straight up. This team is really good. They have a lot of good young pieces and more young, good young pieces on the way, so Devils fans, hold your head up high because, you know, the, the team played well, um, but, you know, it was a hard loss to take. You know, when Timo Meyer missed that wide-open net when it was 2-1, they could have made it 3-1. Uh, against the Carolina Hurricanes, especially this year, you need that two-goal cushion to try to, you know, buckle down and win. But, you know, having that one-goal lead and missing that opportunity, um, I thought maybe something happened to Meyer on the play. Maybe someone got a stick on the puck. Maybe someone hit him last second and caused him to miss. But it was a wide-open miss. And, um... You know, couple that with everything that happened leading into the uh, penalty in overtime. It was crutching because there was a lot of things that happened. Tomas Shatar shouldn't have passed the puck back to Siegenthaler. You had those uh, Hurricanes that were trying to get to Siegenthaler and it forced him to shoot the puck off high off the, you know, into the, into the stands. Um, that caused a delay of game penalty. And, you know, in overtime... Esper Fast uh, was wide open. You know, Ryan Graves left him wide open for the deflection and the goal. So there was a lot of plays that happened. You can't really pinpoint it on one player. But, you know, the, the, the team played good tonight. So, you know, you wanted to see them with an effort um, with in, in these last couple of games. And, uh, you know, we all held belief that it could possibly be a situation where they have, like, all year come back in games. and But... You know, it wasn't meant to be, and, um, you know, we lost to a good Carolina Hurricanes team. So, you know, talking about players who I thought really stood out in these playoffs, um, Jack Hughes was sensational, you know, for his first time in the playoffs, putting up 11 points in 12 games. You had Nico Heischer. I know it took him a while to get going, but he put seven points in uh, 12 games. You had um, Andre Palat, and that's what you got him for. You got him for the playoffs, and... You know, I know this year was a, a struggle with him with his injury, missed a lot of time, but when he came back, totally different player that he played in the playoffs this year. You saw a difference in the way he's he's a player who can elevate his game in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we saw it, seven points in 12 games. You know, he looked good, and he's definitely a player that we need going forward to help out in these situations. Uh, Michael McLeod, six points in 12 games. Now, Michael McLeod, we don't we don't think of him to provide uh, offense, but he was just whenever he had the puck, he was just he was a threat. Uh, whether it was playing physical, hitting, fighting, you know, I love the way he played in the playoffs, and I'm so happy to see him play this good and you know be one of those players for us going forward. Um, you know, Luke Hughes, three points in in uh, uh, two points in three games played, 
And the thing I like about him is he gained more and more confidence the more he played. I can't even imagine how good this player is going to be for us next year. But you saw it in the last game. He was skating more with the puck. He was more confident. He was shooting pucks smartly on net and causing, you know, trying to make something of it. And I love the way he played. And, you know, I know he made some mishaps early on. But, you know, he's going to be a sensational player for us. Um... You know, I can't take away from, you know, uh, Dawson Mercer had seven points in 12, game, 12 games. Took him a while to get going. He put strands of games together where he had a couple of points in, in certain games. But, you know, I, I think for his first go of the playoffs, he played really well. Schmid, uh, um, tale of two things. You know, he played really good uh, sensationally in, in the Rangers series. But in the Carolina Hurricanes series, they were able to solve him and put a lot of pucks behind him. So... You know, I'm curious to see our goaltending situation going into next year. But, you know, I'm not going to fault him. He he helped us win that round against the Rangers, and he had a really good round there. So, Schmidt played well. Marino really stood out to me uh, with playing defensive hockey. He put up four assists in uh, these 12 games, but he was a warrior. You saw what happened in the last game where he took a puck to the face and, you know, put some stuff in his nose, went right back out there. You know, he he was just a good defensive defenseman for us. And Eric Hall, I don't want to talk about him later in the video as well, but, you know, I love what he brought to the table for this team. Uh, you know, but watching him play in the playoffs, he was really good in the Rangers series. Kind of took a back seat in the Carolina series, but he still was in game in, game out and helped us try to win these games. Uh, players that we wanted to see more of. Uh, Jesper Bratt, in 12 games, he put up a goal and five assists for six points, and... You know, maybe we'll find out some sort of injury, but it was a totally different Jesper Bratt in this playoffs than we saw in the regular season. The regular season, he was able to dominate games. You know, he was so standoutish, game in, game out, and in the playoffs, he was not there, and the only goal he scored was an empty net goal. So, you know, with him and Meyer asking for a lot on their next contracts as they're two of our biggest RFAs, I don't think they're going to get what they've been wanting. So I think the playoffs are really hurting them uh, getting that high asking price. And Meyer too, four points, two goals, two assists in 11 11 games. I like what I saw from Meyer in in the aspect of his physicality, the way he was just punishing players out there. Um, He brought a lot to that to the table. I loved seeing that because our players lack that. But you want to see more goal scoring. You brought him in because, because of what he did this year, scoring 40 goals. You wanted to see them in the playoffs for him to help us out, and it wasn't there. So those two players were a bit of a disappointment. Hamilton with a goal and three assists, uh, four points in 12 games. You had Miles Wood, two goals, uh, zero assists in eight games played. Uh, Tomas Tatar, one goal, zero assists, one point in 12 games. And, um, you know, Boquist and Sharon Govich. Uh, Boquist had zero, goal, zero points in six games, and Sharon Govich had... Zero points in three games. So, you know, a lot of players didn't step up and help the team out. And um, you saw what happened. You saw the difference of what happened in the in the regular season compared to the playoffs. And we needed them uh, in these in these rounds, especially against the Hurricanes. And they didn't step up. So, decisions to make from Tom Fitzgerald going forward on these players. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, going back to Eric Holla. I love what he said in the post game because, you know, he's a player I really liked. Uh, what, I, what we saw of, uh, from from this season and out, you know, he didn't put up a lot of points in the beginning of the year. He had his opportunities. He was putting the puck on net, but he brought a lot of intangibles to the table. Good faceoff guy, good defensive forward, um, can move play up and down your lineup. And, you know, the thing I liked about Hola, he can play on your third line and he can play on your second line with Jack Hughes and whatever winger you, you insert there. You know, he's a complimentary piece. He, he uh, helps out your star players as much as your... Bottom line, guys, and I really like what he brings to the table in the locker room and out of it. And, um, you know, I think he's a key piece going forward. I really like what he had to say uh, post-game. He said, we'll be back. Hopefully, I'll be back to, here to put this jersey on again. I have faith in this team. I'd love to be here and be a part of it. I think it's going to be a bright future, and I want to be a part of it. So I would definitely bring back Eric Hall, uh, I love the way this guy plays, battles, and competes, and he wants to be here to help this team win. So we'll see what happens in the offseason. But Tom Fitzgerald has some big decisions to make. You know, the RFA, uh, the UFAs that we have, unrestricted free agents, Tomas Tatar, Miles Wood, Eric Holla, Damon Severson, and Ryan Graves. 
And our restricted forwards are RFAs, Jesper Bratt, Timo Meyer, Diego Sharon Govich, Michael McLeod, Jesper Boquist, Nathan Bastian, Kevin Ball, and Mackenzie Blackwood. So a lot of decisions for Tom Fitzgerald to make, who he's going to keep, who he's going to let go, and what he can do with certain players to maybe move them for assets or you know, bring in some other type of forwards or defense or whatever he wants to to help out this team going forward. So big decisions for this team to make as we have uh, some playoff uh, time under our under our belt for our younger players. And, um, you know, that's something we need. You know, we know now what we need going forward to compete and battle with these good teams. And, you know, there's a lot of good names out there in UFA that, um, you know, in free agency that Fitzgerald could look at. So I'll do future videos on that. But, you know, he has decisions to make going forward. So what I think the Devils should concentrate on, um, I think our third line situation wasn't the best. Uh, I was hoping that uh, Fitzgerald could have added to that in the uh, at leading into the trade deadline. You know, bringing in Meyer, bringing in Lazar, I liked, but I knew Bolquist and Sharon Govich weren't those type of players. And I think Fitzgerald was hoping they'd elevate their game in the when it comes time for the playoffs, and it didn't happen. Um, you know, that was a big thing. You know, they were a team that was smaller and, you know, you needed those big forwards to compete in battle. You saw what happened in a lot of these games between these two teams. They were manhandled out there. These guys were hit and hit hard. And, um, you know, if there's one thing I would like to target is a big skilled agile forward who can help put up some points. Um, you know, you got to concentrate on your third line. You know, you need some depth in this lineup to really compete with, with teams like Carolina and New York, as we, we as we saw this year. And, you know, goaltending situation, what 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 is happening going forward? You know, do we have confidence in Vitek Vanacek? Do we have confidence in Akira Schmid? Uh, you know, you have Nico Dawes in the system. You side Ty Tyler Brennan to his entry-level contract. So you have goaltenders in the pipeline, but do you have confidence in them that they can help you win a Stanley Cup? So that's a decision that we have to make going forward. But, um, you know, there's certain things that we saw from this playoffs that, you know, we could look at, look forward to going forward. You know, a lot of our younger players got experience. A lot of them stepped up and played really well. We saw some players that didn't play well. So there's decisions to make with that. Um, but, you know, I'm proud of our guys. You know, this was a year that was so fun to cover for the Devils. Um, you know, it, it's something that we saw, we, we saw and they needed playoff experience. And they're going to get that with especially this year. They're going to get that hunger to want to get back and, and battle and compete next year. So we'll see. But, you know, it's been a fun ride. You know, it, it sucks that we lost. And, you know, it's hard not to be down on this situation. But, you know, the guys had a great year. The team had a great year. Just beating franchise records all over the place. And, uh, you know, another concern, what happens with Lindy Ruff? Do we sign him to another one-year deal and see what happens? Uh, or, you know, do they just go with... Uh, another coach from within. So we'll see what happens. A lot of decisions to make, but I will keep doing videos throughout the summer. Um, you know, as the next rounds go on, I'll cover more of that. Uh, but in between, I'll do uh, Devils videos too, talking about prospects, talking about uh, players on our team we should keep or let go, or players that we should look at possibly signing in uh, free agency in the offseason. So then there's a draft to cover. So there's a lot to cover in the offseason. So stay with me. Should be fun, uh, fun, uh, rest of the way going so thank you all for watching i really appreciate your time smash that like button if you haven't done so subscribe to the hockey skate down it's free and join a hockey team thank you all so much have a great rest of the night have a great day tomorrow take it easy stay safe